I doubt that's ever likely to change. But we are getting ahead of ourselves. The medieval fantasy kingdom was ruled by the king What's His Face. He was able to defeat all foes of his realm, all except one. The orcs sure ate their chicken and broccoli. Humans, being deceitful creatures by nature, had to resort to dishonorable tactics to defeat the orcs. They call it technology and industry. But in order to make weapons, they needed the natural resources. The ore requirements were so extreme, the king had to resort to convict labor. Every man guilty of a crime, no matter how insignificant, was forced to work in the mines. To prevent the convicts from escaping, the king's sorcerers erected a magic field over the prison colony. But something went wrong. The field expanded uncontrollably, covering a lot more territory than it should, including the sorcerers responsible. Taking advantage of the chaos, the prisoners rebelled. Now they had the king by the balls. He had to supply them whatever they asked for in exchange for magical ore. We are a convict. In the name of King Robar II, bearer of the scepter of Verant, I sentence this convict to stop. Convict, I've got an offer to make you. This letter must reach the leader of the Magicians of Fire. On one condition. Spare me the rest of his nonsense. Don't worry about spoilers. The game's main narrative isn't exactly the heart of the experience. Welcome to the colony. Gothic is a 2001 third-person RPG by the German developer Piranha Bytes. It can be described as a B-tier classic. Nearly everyone who played Gothic likes it, but the game mostly failed to conquer audiences beyond Germany and, to a lesser extent, Poland and Russia. But why is that? Possibly because of bad marketing, or maybe the generic name. And there are other reasons. We'll explore them as we play the game. That's enough. Leave him alone. And now, scram! Meet Diego. I'm Diego. I'm... I'm not interested in who you are. The gothic guy is nameless. There is no character generation of any sort. He doesn't have much of a backstory, although this will get retconned eventually. I have a letter for the High Magician of the Circle of Fire. Really? That's not something that should be shared with others. The mages pay their careers well, Diego explains. And this is a prison colony. A desperate inmate can slit our throat for that letter. The mages are in the castle in the old camp. The old camp is a place and a faction. Diego is from there. He helps the new arrivals, guiding them to the camp and away from other communities inside the barrier. Speaking of, see this blue light thing? If we insist on marching forward, it'll kill us. The field allows things to pass through into the colony, but nothing living gets out. I don't think our character ever held a weapon in his life. In the early game, our victims will be animals, mostly mole rats and these ostrich-looking things called scavengers. It'll be a while till we can take on a human. The old camp is the largest, militarily the strongest, strongest and the wealthiest inmate community in the colony. I'd better keep out of it. Ah, you're probably right. These two assholes are from the new camp. We don't know this yet, but the new campers are called the Rogues. For a modest fee, the hunters can teach us how to remove organs and hides from animals we hunt. But I have a very different money-making scheme in mind. Every time you learn a skill, the NPC gives a quick lecture detailing what you've just learned. In this case, the hunter offers us advice on how to interact with animal AI. It's different from creature to creature, but most will make noises when threatened, signaling the rest of the pack that the danger is close. Is that the old camp over there? No, that's the new camp. The old camp is underneath the bridge. I get a feeling something was lost in translation. You better not stay here. The orc land starts behind that barricade. There are very few areas in the game that are locked behind story events. The orc lands are endgame territories. We can go there right now if we want, but we'll just die. Oh, a chest. 
The main gimmick of this game is social simulation. Think Bethesda's Radiant AI, but much older. Less advanced in some respects, more advanced in others. The guards beat us up for touching their chest. They don't kill us. A defeat in combat doesn't mean you die, but they take half of our ore, which is zero ore. The social mechanics are the most impressive part of the gothic experience, and the reason this game is so loved. There are three camps within the barrier. The old camp is the biggest, and it was the first. But keep it to yourself, people don't need to know it. That huge wall over there is King's Old Keep. This is where Gomez, the Mafia boss, and his cadre of elite guards reside. This is also where the fire mages are. Ultimately, we'll need to find a way inside the keep to deliver the letter. Around the brick wall, there is a shantytown of wooden shacks. The area design is impressively vertical. I have a new recipe. Meat bug ragu a la snaff with rice and mushrooms. Uh, no thanks. The guards hold the highest position in the camp hierarchy. Below them are these guys, the shadows, the shantytown aristocracy. And below them are the diggers, manual laborers who work in the nearby mine. The exclusive access to the mine is the reason this community is the richest, and Gomez is the most powerful man in the colony. I want to improve my handling of one-handed weapons. Beginners often tend to hold one-handed weapons with both hands. Now, don't even start getting into that habit. It'll do you no good. Funny. Pretty sure this is bad advice. The sword should be held with both hands unless you are carrying a shield. There are no shields in Gothic, by the way. As our level of competence increases, the swing animations change. It's easier to stunlock bad guys. This person is from one of the other camps. The communities underneath the barrier treat each other with suspicion, but they are not violently hostile. Be on your guard at all times, especially at night. I haven't slept properly for days. This gives me an idea. After dark, most inmates gather around the big fire and socialize, leaving their homes and belongings unguarded. Please do not interfere with me robbing your house. Our buddy Diego is in charge of the shadows. If you are new to Gothic, it's advisable you work with him. But there are different career options. It's easy to lure single scavengers from the pack. At this point, you should be waiting for them with a raised weapon. In order to get to the swamp camp, we need to pass through the forest. This was pretty much the most immersive forest area in 2001. And I was just about to go on a tangent how this game doesn't deserve its reputation as jank. As we were attacking a group of mole rats, the noises attracted the attention of a much bigger creature. The communities of human prisoners coexist inside the barrier just fine, but the animals absolutely hate each other. That's the true faction war in Gothic. Who are the real convicts? Different animals and monsters have a different hearing and aggression range. Wolves, for example, have extremely sensitive hearing. You think you've managed to isolate one, but somehow you always end up fighting a pack. Goblins are like this too, and they are even more dangerous. Goblin rave on the other side of the bridge. Wonder what's behind the waterfall. There is nothing. We must be close to our destination. Greetings, stranger. You're treading on holy ground. This is the Brotherhood of the Sleeper. Some characters are voice acted in a way that can be described as tastefully unprofessional. Others make you feel secondhand embarrassment. The writing is also hit and miss. The technique is good. There are no expo dumps. The sentences are short. The dialogue flows well, and the voice actors talk pretty fast for the most part. But, you know, I put quite a few hours in Gothic when I was a kid, and uh, I remember almost nothing about these characters. I remember Diego, and this guy we haven't met yet. Baldur's Gate 1 is my favorite punching bag when it comes to text quality, but the thing is, I can remember quite a few characters from that game, but Gothic 1? Barely any. The sect camp is not quite as populated as the old camp, but it's still very big and very vertical. I don't think there is a formal history of the communities inside the barrier. That thing that traps us here existed for, well, at least two decades, it seems. There is a character who managed to grow old in the colony. Years ago, one of the convicts received a vision from an entity called the Sleeper. Eventually, he and some others organized a cult around the worship of the said entity. The Sleeper is quite real, it seems. It taught the cultists how to cast magic spells. The local culture is very different from what we've seen in the old camp. The naming conventions appear to be different, and the clothing style, and entertainment. The cult HQ 
zoo is inside the ancient stone temple. The temple is surrounded by a swamp, a fertile ground for a special type of weed that, once processed, can be smoked. This is supposedly pleasant, but it's not just about pleasure. This weed opens your spirit. If you take the right amount, you can get in touch with the sleeper. Smoking weed unlocks latent magical abilities within a person. And once enough cultists smoke enough weed and gain enough magical powers, the sect will commence a ritual that will enable direct communication with their god. This is their escape plan, recruit dudes and do drugs. But do the novices actually believe in the sleeper or are they here for free weed? You can't imagine what I'm willing to believe and do just to get out of here again. Lester is practical. In order to join this community, we need to impress the local higher-ups called the Balls. Unfortunately, the Balls won't talk to us unless they respect us, and earning their respect is tricky because they won't talk to us. I had a vision. The sleeper talked to me. The huts don't have chests in them, but each home is decorated with a little stone idol of what I assume is the sleeper. You shouldn't believe everything you think. It wasn't very clever. Right? I'm so immersed right now. Have it your own way, kid. You'll soon regret turning down a friendly offer. One of the cult quests sends us back to the old camp. The monsters we've killed don't respawn, at least not on a timer. But the game repopulates cleared areas each time the story progresses a chapter. Vibing with the boys. You mean you want me to pay protection money? No thanks. Bloodwin was only asking for like 10 ore, but a cultured swamp bro like ourselves shouldn't get bullied by the old camp puppies. It's a precious amulet, which should have arrived with the last convoy. If we attack them together, we should manage. I think the VA is acting bad intentionally to communicate these dudes' evil intentions. Whatever, sure, let's go outside the walls. Just me and you, buddy. So. Here we are, far away from your friend Diego. I'm to send you regards from Bloodwin. Choices and consequences and shit. The best way to deal with this at low levels is to attack the guy after we left the safety of the camp, but before he joins with the other goons. Our first actual kill, not counting the animals. <laughs> But it's not all bad. You don't like it here? Why don't you just go then? Join the swamp aristocracy, my guy. There are no permanent followers in Gothic, but sometimes you get escort missions like this one. Is he worthy? He will certainly require your spiritual guidance, master. Yeah, this old camp guy is not exactly the sharpest pickaxe in the shaft or whatever. Hey, you! Who? Me? No, your grandmother. Who else could I mean? I wouldn't go down that way if I were you. Why not? You can't have been here long. Man, that's the way to the Orc land! See, the game takes place in a prison, yes, but it's a Western European prison. Most inmates, including the goons working for Gomez, are very helpful. The protection fees are pathetic. There are free meals, free weed. I have no idea what's going on in the new camp, but if the trend continues, I expect a free PlayStation. I lead an aggroed wolf to the hunter to see what happens. The wolf almost managed to successfully stop unlock the guy. How are things? Not too bad, but I don't have anything to smoke. I have swamp weed. Do you want some? A way to a man's heart is through his lungs. In the middle of the cave, there's a huge hole full of ore. Every single NPC is voice acted, but most characters just have generic dialogue. Tell me about this place. What do you do here? A rice farm. Laborers work the fields during the day. The new camp is the most libertarian community under the barrier. No guards or Templars to look after you. Every man for himself. At the bottom of the power vertical, there are peasants overseen by the gangsters who work for the rice lord. I'm working for the rice lord. Let's forget about that little argument, okay? Above them are the mercenaries, these blue uniforms. The locals managed to build a dam, very industrious. The main camp is inside a huge-ass cavern, and in the center there is a pile of ore. That's the new camp escape plan conceived by the water mages. The ore is magical. The more ore, the more magic. Eventually they'll collect enough to destroy the barrier. I can show you how to control your body. 
It's the art of acrobatics. Acrobatics is a secondary skill we can learn. It doesn't actually do that much. You receive less fall damage, I think, and the jump animations change. Not very useful, but there is more than enough XP in the game to afford vanity skills if you're into that. The new camp was founded by dissidents from the old camp who disagreed with Gomez's rule. That was years ago. The two communities trade and generally don't harass each other too much. We should see if we can make ourselves useful back home. I've come to collect my daily ration. Here, take it! But don't smoke them all at once! This is a weed processing operation. The swamp weeds are mashed by trained cultists under the supervision of a ball. Get your ass to the weed mashers or you'll be for it. Just try to mess with me again, sucker. In a different RPG, this problem would have been resolved via a boring speech check. You damn pain in the butt! Why do you have to meddle in my affairs? I just want to see you mashing. The swamp touches the edge of the barrier. If we attempt to cross it, this happens. Well, I know somebody in the new camp. He'd be interested in weed. The dialogue unlocks a trader in the new camp we can sell weed to. Sounds like a lot of work for a little game, to be honest. You can help me convert this swamp into a massive meadow of flowers. Okay, you just got started. Me? I'll be back later. The gothic guy is not impressed. The raw plants have to be gathered deep in the swamp, which is full of dangerous creatures. <laughs> Damage thresholds play an important role in combat mechanics. Gothic is not an action game. It looks like one. Wikipedia considers it to be an action game. Some people on the subreddit praise its action combat mechanics. But this is not an action game, and if you approach it as such, you'll be frustrated and disappointed. Gothic is very much about the numbers not reflexes. One of the advantages of joining the Swamp Camp is that now we can train both magic and combat arts. There are six tiers of spells total, and the cultists will train you up to tier 4. We are not getting the endgame spells, but there are plenty of low-level utility sorceries that are useful. The temple structure seems to be much older than anything else in the colony. You're not allowed to talk to us. There are very few women underneath the barrier. They are mostly found as possessions of powerful faction leaders. Maps like this one are items we buy off traders. There is no a world map or a minimap mechanic in Gothic. And this is one of the reasons exploration in this game can be so satisfying. You are always looking around, scanning the environment for objects of interest. I even managed to get lost a few times. Uh, we should finish the task we were given in the intro cutscene. Deliver the letter to the fire mages. In order to get access to the keep in the old camp, we need to either join Gomez's crew or pay a bribe of 1000 ore. Training grounds, just like back in the swamp. We get to explore various buildings in the courtyard. These are sort of normal looking king's old structures. Made me realize just how weird the architecture is in this game. Are you a messenger from the outside world? Delivering the letter is not actually a part of the main quest, but I might as well do it since, you know, we said we would and the reward is nice. The fire wizards are a joinable faction, I'm pretty sure, but that career path is close to us. The best way to make money and extra experience is by robbing fellow inmates. All these people could and should be robbed. The old camp guards, the rice lord's crew, this hunter in the wilderness, the dudes who run an illegal drug manufacturing operation, unsanctioned by the balls. Pay the NPCs for skill training and then knock them out and take your money back. You'll be sorry for that. No, I don't think I will. This is the heart and soul of Gothic the video game. After you've killed the beast, you get hold of the mandibles and pull them straight out. This way you I have no idea what any of this nerd shit even means. The reason we're talking is so that his escort leaves sight range. What I actually want is that sword. Next time I'll kill you. That's quite a bit of work he took. Come on, get up. You might have noticed his health bar didn't recover. We get the blade and the money. That's quite an upgrade. Let me pass. I won't let you pass until you watch me eat 20 bowls of rice. I previously insisted that Gothic shouldn't be approached as an action game, but to be fair, the combat does have action-y bits. Skeleton's attacks are well telegraphed and can be dodged or interrupted if you time your strikes right, which is very easy to do. You just need to swing in a general direction of the enemy. Most creatures have enormous hitboxes. 
Okay, okay! They're afraid of us because I've beaten them up and confiscated their weapons. They're just a single rule to remember when hunting crawlers. When you see them, run at them, kill them as fast as you can. Fight without fear and kill without mercy. The biggest mine inside the barrier. Controlled by Gomez and his crew, it's the source of their wealth and power. The mine is also a social location with side quests, people to talk to, side areas to explore. The place is almost like a fourth camp. The sect's Templars work alongside Gomez men. It's a mutually beneficial relationship. The mine is a home to oversized bugs that harass the diggers. The mine crawler organs are used in some sort of sleeper-related alchemical procedure back in the swamp. I don't pretend to understand it. The orc slave operates the mining machine. After we fix it, we can actually see him doing that. The old camp guards and the Templars battling the bugs together. So far, we have witnessed zero instances of factional warfare in Gothic. Admittedly, going to war against the old camp would be suicide. They have so much manpower and equipment. The Mindcrawler Queen. Killing it solves our bug problem and the alchemists in the sacked camp would love to take a look at those eggs. The cult gathers near the temple at night. The invocation is about to begin. Long time of waiting is now... Now over. If the cutscene crashes your game, just mash the escape key once it starts playing. May the sleeper awaken! The sleeper didn't show up. Instead, we are shown a very early 3D orcish face, and our leader falls unconscious. Master, what has happened? Yes, Master, what has happened? What have you seen? He wanted to show us the way to freedom. Yes, what about it? Was it the path to freedom? We are sent on an expedition to the nearby orc cavern. Orcs are kind of annoying to deal with. Surprisingly quick for their size, they almost always manage to land a blow before you stunlock them. The cavern is its own separate world space, so the devs could add more detail without the fear of overtaxing the prehistoric machines that were supposed to run this game. Orc mummies. So this land, the Valley of the Mines or whatever it's called, was historic an orc land. The corpse of the Templar is from the expedition sent ahead of us. After all these dreadful losses, I can't go back to the community empty-handed. The real challenge of this dungeon is dealing with a terrible follower AI. When this guy got stuck inside the wall, I thought I might have hit a game-breaking bug, but the AI eventually unfucked itself. Not sure what we expected to find in this cave, but there doesn't seem to be anything sleeper-related. No! That was it. Now he's gone completely crazy. Hopefully now we are strong enough to take on the shadow beast in the woods. Get clicked, bitch. To be honest, cooking meat is fairly meaningless at this stage of the game, because we basically have unlimited potions and a healing spell. But I still do it out of greed. An attempt to rob a ball fails when he casts a sleep spell and then just goes about his business. I wonder if this kind of thing happens to them all the time. The head Templar thinks all that sleeper shit is very suspicious and from now on we should support the plan of the Magicians of Water from the new camp. The gurus have recognized that they're praying to an evil archdemon. Sounds like another mad idea of the Brotherhood. So the game was pretty good so far. Somewhat janky, but who really minds? It's the dose that makes the poison. Little janky is good for you. Unfortunately, Gothic has the Dark Souls problem. The second half of the game is weaker. The fun parts of the experience are the social interactions and exploration. At this point, we've seen all the communities, did the side quests, and explored most of the game world. Okay, okay! Yeah, remember your place. The ancient ruin is the home of the water mages. You bury undead? That's bad news. The main quest for this chapter involves traveling to the edges of the world map, collecting magical artifacts and meeting old acquaintances. <laughs> Since I completed this quest before even talking to Milton the Fire Mage, his AI bugged out going into permanent follower mode. We have a free companion, I guess. The game is falling apart as you play it. 
These are the guards who robbed us in the beginning of the adventure. The tables have turned. Hey, I thought you were dead. Sometimes I thought so myself. Diego is very useful in combat. The troll or whatever this is looks dangerous, but it's actually pretty harmless because he only attacks Diego, who is immortal. I think you're supposed to use a magic scroll to take this thing down quickly, but we just slap its ass until it dies. Harpies are some of the most unfun enemies to fight in this engine. Their vertical movements fuck with the game's camera, and your weapons don't deal damage unless the camera is locked on a target. Not an action game. Another focus stone op success okay okay Gorn from the Merc Camp helps us out with another one of the Focus Stones. The gimmick here is that you need to transform yourself into a meat bug via a scroll, and then crawl through this opening in the wall. The spell lasts for a long time, perhaps it's even permanent. I had to google how to end it, you just press enter. Lester the Swamp Bro will help us recover the final artifact. He has his own objective in this ruined keep, but I forgot what it was, I wasn't paying attention. This is like playing Neverwinter 1, but in a third person. Same blocky environments. Telekinesis is a cool utility magic. I want to learn how to handle a two-handed sword. You will not only need to master your body, but your mind as well. What the fuck kind of advice is that? But it works, I guess. The movement pattern changed. The attacks are quicker. <laughs> We have the magical artifacts, as well as the necessary ore to destroy the barrier. But the ritual is sophisticated, requires trained cadres of wizards. We need to recruit the fire mages from the old camp. There was a time when I led a very different life. I was one of the best generals of this country. This is Lee, uh, the leader of the Merc faction protecting the ore pile. I have no idea why he decided to show up here and tell us his life story. Wait a second. Put the weapon. Yeah, Lee's axe is quite an upgrade. You'll be very sorry for that. Easy, everything's all right. Someone is forgetting their place. What's Milton doing here? You'd better tell me the whole story from the beginning. One thing after the other. A catastrophe. The old mine caved in. Everyone inside died. Gomez is panicking. His source of income and power is no more. And so is the political status quo under the barrier. Look at that! It's a guy from the swamp camp! So what? What business is it of yours? Your mine's gonna be ours soon. The sect doesn't have a mine, you moron. Access to the old camp is blocked, but we are powerful enough to take on the guards. What the fuck? Oh, whatever. The fire mages are dead, and we have to seek magical assistance elsewhere. Xardas, the necromancer, was cancelled for unethical practices. He lives alone in a tower in the middle of the orc land. Hold on, who, who, who's talking to me? You are talking to me? How did you get into my head? If you don't want to use a voice actor, then a fake language, like in Jade Empire or in Kotor, works a lot better than this. Who dares to disturb me in my studies? My name is... I don't wish to know your name. Xardas is one of the series' key characters. He was the one narrating the intro cutscene. And he thinks the Water Mage's plan is a bunch of nonsense. Turns out that the spell that was cast to create the barrier malfunctioned because of the presence of the Sleeper. The ancient orcish demon needs to be dealt with. Just vibing in the orc town. So, uh, I have a problem. The orc shaman Xardas sent us to find is supposed to be right here. Yeah, we're in the right place. But there is nothing. I looked all over. He didn't spawn. We can climb this abandoned tower. What? On top there is a floating item. The game's bugged. Without meeting the shaman, we can't progress the story. Well, this sucks. But we've seen all the best parts already. The ending chapters are mostly just combat filler. The gothic guy recovers a magical two-hander called Eurisiel, as well as a suit of ore power armor. The new camp escape plan doesn't work, but the ore pile is still useful because it allows us to charge the Eurisiel with its energies. We essentially steal their ore. And then the the hero does a bunch of boring dungeon exploration, eventually confronting and killing the sleeper in a gimmick fight. 
the barrier is no more, game over. Some of the characters will return in subsequent games. Do I recommend Gothic? If this was 2002 or 2012, that would have been a no-brainer. It's a nice, comfy game. But these days, there are just too many goddamn RPGs, and there is not enough time in the world to play all the good ones. So with this in mind, those of you who want to experience this genre of RPG, a Gothic-like, should go straight for the sequel. The strongest game in the genre. That's the community consensus. Or maybe try out the ambitious Polish Total conversion released just a few weeks ago. I haven't got the chance to play it yet, but the nerds say it's good. Since this adventure ended somewhat abruptly, I'm gonna use the free time to talk about the reimagined version of Gothic 1 still in development. If you own a Piranha Bytes game, a demo of this thing might have appeared in your Steam library. There is a foreword. In 2019, the series became part of THQ Nordic. When we started thinking about the possibility of doing a gothic remake, we immediately thought about the amazing atmosphere that the original game delivered. There are obvious things like the UI controls and the combat system that weren't even praised back in the day, among other things that we wanted to revamp to enhance the immersion and believability of the game. Sounds like a good philosophy. Isolate whatever the elements that made the gothic experience work and modernize the rest. Let's see if they succeeded. The Kingdom of Mertama, united by King Robar II. I dig this style. The king sent out the best magicians of the kingdom. The audio isn't mixed well. The, dare I say, iconic welcome to the colony scene was completely changed. Low risk, high return. The fake gothic guy keeps narrating his every action. I briefly glanced at the Steam reviews and this seems to be the main complaint. He talks too much. It could be interesting to play as a character who keeps talking to himself as a form of stimming. But this is not it. This wasn't intentionally made to seem awkward. Yeah, let me use the torch to illuminate my surroundings. Jesus Christ, the default mouse sensitivity is insane. That's a little better. There's obvious overabundance of special effects, fog, camera filters, but uh, as a whole it looks okay, I guess. The items on the table are not interactive. There are two things every gothic game needs to have. First, a social engine. Believable character interactions, NPCs understanding the concept of personal space, non-lethal combat, that sort of thing. And then there needs to be free exploration without overpowered features like the minimap. Oh yeah, the dinos are back. Please, it can't be real. What do you mean? This is a common creature outside the barrier. I don't like these health bars. The minimalist UI is a great choice, but the UI elements that are actually present look goddamn embarrassing and they just ruin the whole thing. My fiancé, who was half asleep in the same room, asked me to tone down the video of two homeless people fighting over a dead dog. As we are about to get eaten by the tutorial creatures, the game's version of Diego shows up and saves us. You're still alive. Congratulations on surviving your first day. The voice actor is different, but it's whatever. It doesn't matter what crimes you committed outside. The problem is that he talks very slowly. The writing is low information filler and none of this can be clicked through. This is what the dialogues look like now, Mass Effect style. Uh, it's fine, I suppose. But before we leave here... Do you have any questions? I have a question. Why are good video game writers so rare? Writing is one of the oldest mediums practiced for thousands of years, so why haven't we figured it out? From this point, the protagonist is free to move around and explore the starting area a bit. Interactable items and objects are now marked with a UI element, because otherwise you won't be able to see them due to all the post-processing. <laughs> The wooden construction in the distance is the exchange area, where Gomez men and the king transact valuable ore for items. The reworked version looks good, I like it. Almost marched straight into a pack of wolves, since it's a little hard to tell them from the environment, because the game uses post-processing like it's baby's first Unity prototype. Although, I need to point out that the screenshots on the game's Steam page, that supposedly represent a more advanced build, they don't appear to have the special effect bloat, and 
and uh, actually look very gothic authentic. There is a stamina bar now. That's good. No more cool animations of the gothic guy eating dozens of rice bowls. This is cultural decline. And now he dresses like a teenager from a Final Fantasy game. Despite all this, I'm enjoying the experience so far. <laughs> The guy gives you a side quest I ended up ignoring because he talks so slow and I didn't want to suffer any more of it. Plus the micro stutters are annoying. What do you think you're doing? I wonder if this is a demonstration of the ownership mechanic or is he just scripted to say that? <laughs> I can tolerate bad performance and bugs, but the freedom to engage in combat with any character is an important feature of Gothic's social engine. Until they fix this, it's not a Gothic game. Simple as. There doesn't appear to be a minimap, which is a very good sign. Oh, these are scavengers, not dinos. The combat animations look fine. Mechanically, the battles seem to be more nuanced than in the original. You can switch combat styles, make fast and slow attacks. The protagonist is overall more responsive. I'd say it looks like an improvement. Very pretty. You can now manually switch which foe to target. A welcome modernization. Attracting animals with food. A new mechanic. What do you mean I don't know any recipes? Just take a piece of meat and, you know, touch the cooking thing. For Inos. I hope it's as good as it smells. Guys, the game's stuck. I can't, I can't exit this screen. Well, what can I say? This experience is certainly authentically buggy. What are your thoughts on The Witcher 1? Is it a good adaptation slash fanfic of the books? My only contact with the Witcher literature was a short story that came bundled with the special edition of the first game I used to have. I'm not sure I'm qualified to answer that. Witcher 1 might be a good fit for the channel now that I think about it. 10% of that game is cool, melodramatic character interactions, and the rest rest is meaningless filler, I can edit out. But the next thing I want to take a look at is Fallout Yesterday, an attempt to recreate Black Isle's original Fallout 3, based on the surviving design documents. Support the channel on Patreon. See you in two weeks.